Welcome, welcome to a new challenge. This is Dr. Ali Mugabel, and we're looking at a new problem set, a new quiz related to angle modulation. This includes frequency modulation and phase modulation. So I'll have five questions to challenge you. Get your pen and calculator ready, and let's go to the first question. The first question, the first two questions, I'll give you the two questions and then I'll leave you to answer them. So the first two questions, the first one is about the superheterodyne receiver. It says, for a superheterodyne receiver with an IF frequency of 10.7 MHz, the image frequency, the image frequency or the image station, the image frequency for a broadband station at 95.4 MHz is, what is the image station? Here are a few answers. Pick the correct answer. You can pause for one minute and then continue. Get the right answer out of this. What is the image station? Question number two. When a phase modulated signal, when a PM signal is differentiated, the resulting signal can be best described as which one of the following? Both amplitude and modulated, both amplitude modulated and frequency modulated by dm by dt, or b, or c, d, or e. Pause the video for two minutes and pick your answer: a, b, c, d, e. Now we are ready to show you the answers for a, for part number one and part number two. If you haven't finished, you can pause the video. I'm now going to show you the answers. For question number one, the answer is 116.8. That's two times the intermediate frequency plus the image station frequency. That's two times this 21.4 plus this frequency, and you get the answer. For the second question, you need to write the equation for the PM and then differentiate. And the correct answer is A, both amplitude modulated and frequency modulated in the two cases by dm by dt. Now let's move to the third question. Okay, we'll start with an easy one, then we'll give you a more difficult question in number four. The first question says, question number three, a tone modulated FM signal is given by the following. So this expression is an FM modulated signal. We'll ask you for two things. Estimate the bandwidth of the FM signal in kilohertz. And also, what is the power of the FM signal? Okay, now we can pause the video for about four minutes and then approximately, and then try to find the answer for part A and B. Once you are done, we will re be ready to show you the answers. So pause the video now until you are done. For the solution, for part A, you can tell that this that the carrier frequency is 1 MHz. You can tell that the bandwidth of the message is 1 kHz. And from there, you can find the deviation on the frequency and find beta to be 2. The amplitude for this case is 6. And then um, we can find the bandwidth using Carson's rule. By substitution, the correct answer should be 6 kHz. And for the power of the FM signal, it should be the following. It should be amplitude squared over 2. So 6 squared is 36 divided by 2 is 18. Now, let's move to a more challenging question, question number 4. Question 4 says, we'll have dual tone. We had one single tone, now we have dual tone angle modulated signal. That's a bit more challenging. An angle modulated signal is given by the following. We have the, the expression for the angle modulated. It didn't say PM or FM. We have few requests. Estimate the bandwidth of the angle modulated signal. Okay, estimate the bandwidth of the angle modulated signal. If the angle modulated signal is an FM signal with frequency deviation of 4 by times 10 to the power 3 radians per second per volt, determine the message of the signal. So the constant is given, the type of modulation is given, and now we need to find the message. For the third part, what is the value of the frequency deviation ratio or the modulation index? What is the value of the frequency deviation or modulation index? So try to find these three. 
it can take about eight minutes so you can pause the video now and try to answer these three questions once you are ready i will share with you the last answers the final answer here are the answers for part a the final answer is 24 kilohertz if you want you can share your details how we get to this number in the comment section for part b the message for the given information should be the given expression cosine and then we have plus four times cosine with two different frequencies so if you get this expression right you are good to go if you have a scaling factor then there's something wrong what is the value for the modulation index beta should be five in this case you need to find delta f and you need to find the bandwidth and you can find beta for, for this case okay so i hope that you got this right if you have if you got these things correct please share your methodology or equations in the comment section so your friends can can also look at their answers now the final question here it's a bit different it's about armstrong indirect fm generation so a signal m of t frequency modulated modulates 100 kilohertz carrier to produce a following fm signal so this is the narrow band fm this is the narrow band signal is given by the following expression we would like you to sketch to generate or draw a block diagram design uh, to generate to take this narrow band and generate a wide band fm signal dw wide band fm signal with a carrier frequency of 75 megahertz so and the peak frequency deviation is 75 so we are given delta f at the end and we are given also the carrier frequency so this is 75 meg and this one is 75 kilohertz okay so assume the following are available for your design just to make the answer uh, seem unique frequency multipliers of any integer value are there so we can have any integer number for the frequency multiplier a local oscillator uh, is given in the following range between 50 megahertz and 150 megahertz so you can use a, a local oscillator frequency shifter with the following range of frequencies an ideal band bus filter is available with tunable center frequency and bandwidth now your block diagram design must clearly specify the carrier frequency and frequency deviation at all logical points as well as the center frequency and bandwidth of the band bus filter so it's time to stop the video here and try to solve this question you'll find that with these specs um, there is some certain design that we have to come up with so you draw the draw the block diagram and show the the delta f and carrier frequency at the different stages so you achieve the objective from this expression you can find the initial values oh this is the real challenge so let's see whether you can do it or not take 10 minutes pause the video and then in the next slide i'll be sharing with you the answers here is the block diagram of the answers if you want to go step by step this is the expression for for the narrow band fm and the bandwidth of the message is this frequency 10 kilohertz this could be the message or um, the integral of the message beta you can find that beta is going to be 0.005 if you if you find the bandwidth of the message and delta f then you can find that the ratio between them is going to be 0.005 and then also delta f is 50 hertz all of these can be found from this expression the center of course the carrier frequency at the beginning is uh, 100k and these are the values here i'm, I'm calling them delta f sub zero and fc sub zero so we'll do two stages we'll have multiplier only and then we have the frequency uh, the oscillator the frequency shift the ratio between the two delta f at the output and the input is 1500 so we need a nonlinearity of order 1500 but that's going also to scale um, that's also going to scale so it will give you the proper delta f it will give you the proper um, delta f but for the carrier frequency it was going to be 150 meg rather than the required 150 megahertz so now uh, fc is going to be the, the required the required uh, local oscillator the required final frequency and the local oscillator if you solve this equation so we want the output to be 75 meg and this means that the local oscillator is also going to be 75 megahertz uh, the numbers luckily are, turn out to be the same because 750, 75 plus 75 is 150 and then of course we can tell that the bandwidth of the center frequency of the band bus filter is 75 megahertz and the bandwidth using Carson's rule we can show it should be 170 
kilohertz. It should be 170 kilohertz. Okay, so uh, that's the solution. I hope that you got these things right. If you have any question or comment, please share in the comment section. Thank you for being good listeners. Thank, thank you for watching. Please share these videos with others. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe in the channel. Thank you. We'll see you in coming videos.